Remember, the narrowband sensor is used as a signal to PCM, which starts the control process. What does that mean? Well, this means we are going to be looking at a nearly constant 0.45 volts during normal operation on this narrowband reference volt. Let me say that again. During normal operation, the reference should stay near 0.45 volts. As soon as the narrowband starts changing, the pump is going to start running and changing the mixture in the sample cell and making corrections to long-term, short-term fuel trim and keeping this at near 0.45 volts. When you have major excursions for long periods of time from 0.45 volts, this sensor is no longer pumping enough oxygen and has failed. Let me say that again. That's important. We're back to diagnostics again. When this sensor can't hold a near constant 0.45 volts, we have a bad sensor. End of discussion. Now, the current flow ranges between minus 1.8 to plus 2.5. The PCM is going to use this current flow to calculate the air fuel ratio of the main exhaust flow, change short term, long term fuel trim to control mixture, just like we did with an oxygen sensor. Now, it's difficult to measure this small current flow. So you're going to have to use scan data. You could put open the circuit up, put an ammeter in, and read this current flow. It's only going to be there for short periods of time. It'll go up to whatever's required. Let's say we're going rich like we had before down to one point, minus 1 1.5 milliamps. The PCM is going to correct it, bring it back to zero. So what you're going to see is small excursions away from zero back to zero because the PCM is going to be changing short-term, long-term based off of this numbers. So it's not going to hang out here at 2.25 milliamps for very long. That would cause the voltage on our reference cell to be wrong. Part of making this accurate is heater. High heater current is needed in this example. This is a Bosch. It's a 10 watt heater. It's got 2.1 ohms when it's cold, 3.2 when it's hot. What we're going to try to do is heat this up high enough that varying engine RPMs will not cause problems. We have an operating temperature typical value of around 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. Really range between 1300 and 1500. In that range we have accurate readings. So one of the reasons this may be inaccurate is maybe the heater is not at the right temperature. Since this is a high amperage heater you need to measure it. It's going to use duty cycle controller to maintain the correct current flow for the temperature. And you can't actually measure the temperature of the element inside the, the O2 sensor. This is not the temperature of the shell sticking out of the exhaust. That's going to be connected to exhaust temperature more than it is to the element temperature. If you can't maintain 0.45 volts, go look at the heater current. So if it's maxed out, running high heater, something's wrong. It's not working. If you don't have good current flow, something's wrong. Use your low amps probe to do that testing. This heater is part of the sensor to speed up the heating process on the newer sensors in use today. Normal heat up time is 20 seconds. The wide range AFR adds new dimensions to scan data diagnostics. We showed you at the beginning. We can look at full rich. We can look at full lean. Let's look at the pinouts and see what they look like. We picked an, a Bosch example here on a Volkswagen. Pin 4 is the calibration resistor. This is that 30 to 300 ohm resistor made to compensate for differences in manufacturing tolerances. The current pump is on pin 2. This is where we either put a negative current flow in to release oxygen or put in positive current flow to absorb oxygen at the current pump. In the center is the reference, our narrow band and our pump. Both use pin 1 as a reference. It's a shared electrode. Pin 5 is the system where we expect to see our constant 0.45 volts. When we can't hold a constant 0.45 volts, something's wrong. First thing to check is pins 3 and 6 for the heater. We've got to have good heater current, good heater control. Now there's a couple other pins. Pin 8 is a shield around all this wiring to keep out any RFI. And pin 7 is not used. So we're going to have eight pins on this connector, much more than we had on the conventional old connectors. But let's look at more detailed information. We've looked at construction. Let's look at the circuitry behind it. This is a Toyota example. We're going to get inside the circuitry, inside the PCM, 
to talk about this. A 3.0 volt and a 3.3 volt reference. It's used by two balanced amplifiers. Let's look at those two balanced amplifiers. The top amplifier uses this 3.3 volt as reference at the top for the sensor. The bottom uses this 3 volt reference. What's going to happen is the two voltages remain almost constant under various air fuel ratios. Now everything on the left is in the PCM. Only the, two, the, the AFR sensor is out here. In this particular diagram, we're not showing you the heaters. We're just showing you the two connections on this Toyota. The current flow through the two amplifiers will be zero at a lambda of one. Lambda one, zero current flow. This is important. Current flow through the two amplifiers will be positive with a lean mixture. It's going to be doing the same thing we had before just like we saw in construction, only now we're seeing the internal amplifiers, what they're going to be doing. The current flow to the amplifiers will be negative when there's a rich mixture. So it's going to run negative current flow, positive current flow to maintain two voltages. Now these are not the same voltages we work with on Bosch. On Bosch we had a reference voltage of a steady 0.45 volts. Here we've got a, a 3.3 at the top and a 3.0 at the bottom. concept is the same. It's maintaining constant voltage reference by varying current flow. Now we take these two voltages that remain constant, they make very minor changes just like our 0.45 volts did. They'll have minor bumps up and down. We'll normally be looking at 0.33 volts in scan data. But the PCM changes current flow into voltages that represent AFR values internally. What's the, the sensor seeing? What's the air fuel ratio? It's going to use this current flow. It's going to change it into a voltage. The two amplifiers vary the amount of current to maintain a constant bias voltage on the two points. The scan tool is the only way to read the voltage at the processor input. Since the PCM has changed this current flow into voltage, we have to go to scan tool. Here's a scan tool and a total example with scan data. Normal idle running 0.3 volts. What we're going to do here is show you what happens to the voltage we snap accelerate. We did two snaps. We're going to use the second one because it was a better snap. When we go snap accelerate, initially we're going to go slightly lean and then we're going to go down to full lean, full rich. Snap acceleration, we need full enrichment. Went to 2.7 volts. That's full rich. Full lean is 3.8. Remember, normal idle, 3.3. Going down in voltage is rich, going up is lean, because we're using the current flow. The full rich is showing normal reaction to acceleration enrichment. This is what's supposed to happen. The full lean is showing the normal reaction to decel fuel cutoff. And when we get through, it's going to spend just a little bit of time going back rich again. Let's use the scan tool graphics to determine if a system is fueling correctly. Remember. Short-term, long-term are a result of the air fuel signal. Use both of these to determine rich and lean conditions. If you want to find rich or lean, you're going to have to go back and look at short-term, long-term, just like we did with the oxygen sensor, because all these changes are going to be only transitory. The system is going to change short-term and long-term to bring us back to 3.3 normal operation. Let's go look at that. Normal operation the PCM has corrected short term and long term. We're running, look, an almost steady 3.3 volts. We have a few bumps up and down, nothing significant. So this is what's happening when we have made an adjustment. There are times when we're not going to have stoichiometric fuel mixture, right? Let's talk about wide open throttle data. Driving on the highway, steady throttle, 3.3 volts. We slam the accelerator to the metal. We bump lean momentarily. Then we go down to a lambda of 0.9, which is 2.7 volts. We hold that voltage. Why are we looking to hold it? We want to hold that voltage because that tells us we have normal fuel delivery. We must have sufficient fuel delivery to give us a constant lambda of 0.9, which is about 13.2 air fuel ratio. That says we've got sufficient fuel pump output, sufficient fuel pressure, sufficient output from the fuel injectors to supply the proper amount of fuel for full throttle, full power. 
narrowband oxygen sensors couldn't supply this amount of information. It flattened out. We would be an open loop now. We do not have to be an open loop now. We can be looking at fuel control. So we rely on this rich limit to be able to see full throttle delivery. This is something we could not see with a narrow band. Now hopefully this has given you enough information about narrow band that will help you understand the advantages of wide band. Hopefully we've given you enough information you can diagnose problems with either a system like the Toyota or a system like the Bosch. Both have constant voltages. Toyota's constant voltages were 3.3 and 3.0. The constant voltage we're looking for on the Bosch was 0.45 on the narrowband reference. Utilize this information. Remember that this is going to drive short-term, long-term fuel trim just like an oxygen sensor did. Review this as often as you need to to review your analysis of wideband and narrowband oxygen sensors.